Bible to turn to 1 Kings chapter number 14. 1 Kings chapter number 14. If you need a Bible, please raise your hand. We'll make sure some men get those. I should have done that. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to use this handheld instead of waiting wait for the other deal. I got red, Brother Frank. Or Brother Hayward. I got red. Let's stand when you find your place there. 1 Kings chapter number 12 or 14. 1 Kings chapter number 14. Just want to give you a thought this morning or tonight or today, whatever it is. Here, uh, it is this afternoon. I would love to give you a thought this afternoon. I believe we can make it work when the Lord can do it. I've been praying that God will do it. Who needs a Bible? Raise your hand. Just slip your hand up quickly if you can. Right here in the front, over here, over here. All right, good. And a couple over there. These guys. 1 Kings chapter number 14. 1 Kings chapter number 14. 1 Kings chapter number 14. We're going to begin reading in verse number 25. And we'll be seated after we read just a couple of verses. 1 Kings chapter number 14. Everybody okay? Make sure you don't have 2 Kings. Have 1 Kings. Sometimes I'll do that. Uh, verse number 25. It says, And it came to pass in the fifth year of King Rehoboam that Shishak, king of Egypt came up against Jerusalem and he took away the treasures of the house of the Lord and of the treasures of the king's house. He even took away all that he took away. I'm sorry. He even took away all and he took away all the shields of gold which Solomon had made and King Rehoboam made in their stead brazen shields and committed them unto the hands of the chief of the guard, which kept the door of the king's house. Heavenly Father, Lord, I love you. And God, I pray, Father, that you would help us today. Please speak to our hearts, Lord. This is not something to pass time. We need the word of God to meet with us. And God, I pray that you would hope our hearts were tired. Oh, we've had a great week. Oh, we just ate, Lord. And Father, we need supernaturally for you to wake us up. Put us on the edge of our seats. May we think about the Word of God in this short time. Please help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You be seated. I probably will preach 10 or 15 minutes. So just give me your, give me your attention for that. And if we get down to the end of 15 minutes, I'll ask you for attention for more. But let's just do this right now. Uh, we, we read that. I want you to turn your Bibles over to first, Second Chronicles. Just turn over a couple books. Second Chronicles chapter number 12. Second Chronicles has the same story, just written a little bit different by someone else, and there's a little more light shed here, but I want you to see it. Amelia, Amelia, be quiet. I want you to see something. In 2 Chronicles chapter number 12, verse number 9, the Bible says, So Shishak, king of Egypt, came up against Jerusalem and took away the treasures of the house of the Lord, and the treasures of the king's house. He took all. He carried away also the shields of gold which Solomon had made. Instead of which, King Rehoboam made shields of brass and committed them to the hands of the chief of the guard that kept the entrance of the king's house. And when the king entered into the house of the Lord, the guard came and fetched them and brought them again into the guard's chamber. Now, I want you to understand what's going on here. Uh, Rehoboam uh, is Solomon's son. He's now the king. Uh, Rehoboam is the guy that, uh, I believe he's the guy that when he took over, uh, the people came to him and, and wanted him to be good to him. And he says, go ahead and leave, and I'm going to get some counsel. And the, the elder men of the church, the good men, the ones that had been around with his father, the ones that had the good advice, said, Rehoboam, if you treat them good, they'll serve you all the days that are alive. That's right. And then Rehoboam liked that, but he really didn't like it. He went to his friends. And these guys thought if they gave him this advice that he'd still be their friends. And so they said, Rehoboam, yo, get them. Treat them terrible, put it on them. And Rehoboam decided to take that advice and be wrong to the people. And now Rehoboam is the king of Israel, and, uh, or Judah, and he is there, and uh, uh, the king Shishak of Egypt comes against them, and God draws them against them, and there's some gold shields that Solomon had made 
that were on display. They were on display there. They were on the wall. You would see these gold shields when you come in, and you would be almost taken back by them when you saw them. You'd think, wow, those are awesome. I mean, listen, I got a little gold ring here, and it's nice, but he made shields of gold. And they were for the show in the house of the Lord. To show who God was. He made them for God. And he wanted God to have a great name. And so they were just something to be on display. Now, King Shishak comes from Egypt. And he takes all those gold shields. So Rabbi very quickly just thinks, we're going to replace them. But we're going to replace them with brass. Now, I like brass, I like gold, but I'd much rather have gold than brass. So he replaces them with brass because brass would be very shiny, and maybe from a distance, now listen to me, we're getting somewhere here, so we'll put this together. From a distance, you might look at those brass shields and think, maybe they're gold. I mean, maybe they wouldn't know. And Rehoboam did that for a show. Everybody say that, show. Say, show. show. He did it for a show. And so what Rehoboam would do, and it's very interesting what he would do, Brother Paul, he thought that he could fool the people, and the people would see those brass shields, and they'd say, hey, those are the gold ones. Those are the ones that Solomon made. Everything's fine. I mean, he didn't run to the people and say, they took our gold shields. He just decided to make some fake shields, David. He made some fake ones, and the people would look at that and say, wow, what a show. So now, if we look in chapter or in Second Chronicles, he tells them there, this is basically what he's telling them. I'm going to skip down through some of this. He says, look, when I get ready to go to the house of God, I want you to go to that chamber. I want you to get those brass shields out and I want you to bring them, and when I come out, all the guards will be standing there with those brass shields. And people would see Rehoboam going into the house of God, and they'd say, man, that's awesome. What a, what a show. So he's pretending to have gold shields. He's putting on a show for them when he goes to the house of God. When he left the house of God, he would say, okay, take the shields and put them back in the chamber. I've already made my show. I put on a show for people. People believe I've got the real thing, and I do that when I go to the house of the Lord. Now, the message is simple today. What are you showing people about your Lord? Wow. Now, or is your Christianity a show? You see, Pastor Burton has on a tie that I seem to like and, and a hanky and a black suit and a very shiny shoes on and, and man, I, I, my hair is whipped up and, and I'm thinking, yo, I might, yo, I put on a pretty good show. But if I didn't get with the Lord, and do anything for the Lord. I could come in here and you guys would think, man, he's got it all together. It's a good show. Nobody knew Rehoboam was lying there. He was just putting on a good show. And so we got to be careful. You see, if I was to ask Pete, for instance, Pete, what is your Christian, or what is your being a, a Muslim, and I don't believe Pete's even a Muslim, right? what, what is that doing for you? What is your God doing for you? He would have to say nothing. If he asked me what my God is doing for me, I would tell him what God is doing for me, and I hope that it would be more than just a what? Show. And if we're not careful, when we come to the house of God, we pick out those brazen shields and pretend like they're gold shields. And we walk in with the good brazen ones and they're not, they're brass, they're not gold. And people say, boy, what a show. Now only God knows if we're putting on a show or not. Amen. Brother Burton, have you ever put on a show? I have. I have. Just being honest, not right with God. 
Now, I was doing all right for the Lord coming in this church. It just didn't do right. Came in brass. Should have came in gold. I married gold. I'm just saying that. I married up, is what I would say. Brother Tony was telling us about his wife and things, and I thought, man, he, his wife is my wife. They, they got the same ideas. And he said, Brother Bert, we married up. And so I believe I've gotten gold with her. But sometimes I believe she gets brass with me. Now, Ray Bowen put on a good show. And it says right there in verse number 11, when the king entered into the house of the Lord, the guard came and fetched them and brought them again to the guard's chamber. Means they fetched them to go in and after it was over, they brought them back to the chamber. I mean, that's unbelievable. That just blows me away. Solomon's were hanging up and everybody knew it, but now Rehoboam makes brass ones, puts them away so nobody can inspect them. Brings them out just for a show. So I'm just asking you today, do you have the real deal or are you putting on a show? See, nobody's going to know, but God knows. And then I, I, that, 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 that tears me up that God knows when I'm not real with Him. And I only tell you my stuff because I want you to know, I'm, man, I am just a man. I don't pretend to be perfect. We know I'm not perfect, so I tell you all my dirt. I have no problem with that. I don't intend to do that, but I do it. But today I want to be gold. And I want to walk in and be the real deal. And I want to just go get me the brave, the brazen shields pretending like they're gold on Sunday. A lot of us are doing that now. I mean, what is it like where you're at when nobody's around? What's it like when nobody's there in the house with you? And what do you look at? And what do you say? What do you think about? See, if you're not careful, you're just brass. I mean, God's not like that. God is not for that. Rehoboam was wicked. His daddy set it up. Where they, when he messed around, they, they cursed that whole family. Solomon had 700 concubines and 300 wives. Or vice versa, 300 wives and 700 mistresses. And got mixed up in their religions and ruined his life. But Rehoboam was supposed to be acting like this because it ruined his life. Rehoboam was a brass shield because his daddy was a brass shield. Mamas and daddies. Man, it terrifies me to think when I'm, when I'm different at home with them than I am here with you. So do you do that, Brother Burton? Sometimes. But I often try to correct it. And you ask them, does daddy ever apologize to you? And I say, all the time. So I want to be gold. I want them to know he, they got a real dad that really loves the Lord. I want God to look down and say, that ain't a brass shield. Bert's not putting on brass. He's got gold. Now, are you gold today? I'm not trying to beat you up, folks. I'm just telling you, Red Ball made a grave mistake there. Should have went and got gold shields and stopped putting on a show. And he only got them for the house of the Lord. Then he left. Then he left the house of the Lord. He put them back. We're going to get to the house of the Lord. And the big shields would come out. And it'd be a big show. When he go home, he said, "Put them back in the guard chamber. Put them back. We're just going to use those when we come here." Now I know who I'm talking to. I'm talking to our faithful few, the people that are Liberty Baptist Church at the core. And he said, "Well, Burton, well, why do you tell us this? Do you think we're all fake?" I think we're all fake at times. But, it's, but thank God we can clean up and God can sit on our tail, or it's not our tail, step on our feet. <laughs> Will, I don't normally talk like that. Thank God, this whole week, God hit me and helped me. When I mean, He helped me, I thought, He helped me. How about that? Thank the Lord, He showed up and touched me. And He helped me this morning thinking about grace and He's helping me right now. See, when I preach these messages, God help me if I preach something that I'm not trying to do myself. And there's a whole bunch of brass shields preaching gold messages. I don't want to be one of those. And I've never tried to fool any of y'all into thinking I was somebody. Oh, oh, Pastor Burton. Try to help me help you. 
We need to do it together. And what Liberty Baptist Church needs in 2015 is gold. We cannot, tra we cannot regress. We cannot step back anymore. Every service has to be gold. Every day when you wake up on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, you've got to be gold those days, not Thursdays and Sundays. Fridays and Saturdays, you've got to be gold. So when you get to the house of God, you don't have to bust anything out and pull anything out. Well, Tony says as he walks around his church, his Bible's all over. So I just hope they got two sets. Everybody leaves them there. And, and I got a whole closet full if you're missing yours. We just put them in the closet. But I'm just telling you, we throw away anything that doesn't say KJV. And if you bought something nice and you want your money back, uh, Nassim has it. <laughs> You're wearing a sweatsuit. <laughs> Stand up, Nassim. That's what I want, man. She told me to buy one with her income tax. I said, I gotta get some suits. She goes, you get a new Adidas sweatsuit too. I thought, whoa. Huh? I only got one. Need more than one. Hey, listen. Let me say this. You know what I had to wear one more time? You know what I had to wear when I was growing up? Here's what I had to wear when I was growing up. You're like this. Hey, ma'am, uh, don't let the blonde in the middle get you in trouble. The one I had to wear when I was growing up had stripes on it. But there was like two. Two. <laughs> Pro wings. One of them was like was zigzagged and that little tag in the back said Kmart. <laughs> Blue lights. My mom said, son, that's just as good as those ones those other guys got. And I'm like, Blue lights. They're going to kill me at school, mom. You got the real deal. So, I mean, that's what they don't they don't say now. You can try to wear the fake one, and you can fool a few people from a distance. And they might look real from a distance. And when you pull them out of the chamber, put them on for church. But look, God wants gold. And we ought to just be striving. Look, Lord, I want to be gold. I don't want to have any brass lies. I don't want to have brass anything. I don't want to tell a one or two. I want to be gold, Lord. And be the real deal. And that's what's going to win the city of the Christ. That's what's going to make God happy. Folks, we're here to make Him happy and to please Him, and that's it. And everything we do with every person in our life ought to please God. Relationships are of the Lord, and if the relationship with God's right, we please Him when our relationship with everybody else is right. And so we got to be gold, red, bone, blue. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. So Candy, you can just come play, and maybe you need to get to the Lord now. Say, well, Brother Bernard, I'm good. Well, good. I'm glad you are. But look, we do need to talk to God. And you got to be real, folks. What do we do, Brother Burton? We just say, Lord, help me to be real. I want to be what God made me to be. I don't want to be second rate. I don't want to be second best. I don't want to get close to what God wants. Each day, I just let God work on me. When I got saved, little by little by little, God kept working. It didn't all happen overnight. For eight months, I still continued to get high, and I didn't know how to quit. I tried, and eight months later, God said, I got you. And then little by little by little by little, man, it's not an overnight process, folks. God does it little by little, and he wants to do it with us. And some of us have been here the whole duration of the church, six years. But that does not mean that we're done. We have to keep growing little by little by little. And we've got to keep polishing our gold or it will turn into brass. And so let's get to the Lord. Heavenly Father, please bless the invitation. Well, thank you for just the vault, the little nugget in the Bible. I want to be gold. But I don't want to show up with the church and be brass. I don't want to be brass at home trying to tell my kids that I'm gold. I want to be what I'm supposed to be for you, Lord. I don't want to be a show. I want to show the world what you are. Not that you're just brass when you're gold. Father, bless it now. In Jesus' name, amen. May God help you now.